Hey guys, welcome back. For today's video tutorial, I'm gonna set up a new sensor that is MPL 115A2. To gain more knowledge about this sensor and to know what exactly the sensor is, let's have a look over the website that is controleverything.com and search this sensor. Now we got that MPL 115A2 is a digital barometer 50 to 115 kilopascal. Now these are some of its features which you can look upon it and you can purchase this sensor obviously. Hence, I will be interfacing the sensor MPL 115A2, a digital barometer, with a Raspberry Pi and a Python code. To get the Python code, we can go to the resource tab as you can see on my screen and here is the Python code sample. You can download the Python code sample from this link as a zip file. And you can also have the code from GitHub repository, github.com and the repository name is Control Everything Community. Now what we require is some hardware or some products along with the sensor and let's make connections and make this sensor a workable environment. This here is our sensor MPL 115A2. It's a digital barometer sensor which we are going to be setting up for this entire video and the hardware connections part. In addition to this we need a Raspberry Pi. Now to provide a solution to how to connect a sensor, Raspberry Pi and other I2C devices and to make this connection a lot easier to see and to make, we require an I2C sheet. Now this is available on our website controleverything.com. Now gently push over the I2C shield over the GPI pins of the Raspberry Pi. Well, to make a connection among the sensor and the I2C shield, the binding factor comes is a connecting cable. Now make the connection and while making this connection, make sure that the brown wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor. And similarly to the shield just like that now the connection will look like this now we need to power up the Pi and here comes a micro USB into the picture insert it up in the power jack now to connect the Raspberry Pi with the internet connection we have two ways first of all this is an Ethernet cable gently place over the Ethernet jack in case if you don't have this one we have a second issue and second part is a nano USB adapter wireless and gently push over the USB port. So you have two ways to get it done. Now we are done with the hardware connections part. Now let's have a look over the code. We will work over the explanation working so that we can have the entire video part. Well we are done with the connections part for the hardware of this particular sensor which we will be requiring later in this video in the working section. So now we require the code first of all. So for that log into github.com and here searching for the repository that is control everything community which you are able to see on my screen now get over it and here is our required sensor MPL 115A2 and this is the python code we are looking forward to work upon and before that let's have a look over the instructions for this particular code and um, for the python section we have to download and install the assembles library on the raspberry pi as we have done already in the code as you can see uh, this is the link which will help us to have the library. So why not we have a look over this as you can see SMS hyphen C FFI 0.51.1. So this Python module allows SMS access as you can see all the commands which will help us to install and all the steps taken instructions will be provided here. So you can have a relevant information about that. So go through it carefully and install the SMS before running the code of course. Now get back to the code as you can see, uh, this is a python code, it's a .py extension file. The first thing you notice that uh, installation of assembler and time libraries and in the second part the address of the sensor is 0x60 as you can see. We are reading coefficients for compensation here and we are reading it from 0x04, 8 bytes of data and the command is here. Here takes the conversion part of that particular data we have just read. Uh, converting the values according to the data sheet of MPL 115A2. Uh, now we are sending a pressure measurement command that is 0x12 and we have sent the command for 0x00 that is start conversion. Writing command is here. Now we are taking a delay of 0.5 asleep. Now again we are reading the data of 4 bytes from 0x00. It's a pressure and temperature data. We are being provided a list of values. So these values are being converted here into pressure and temperature all the till here. So this is how it's work 
and it all works according to the formulas to the procedures we have to follow which are given in the data sheet, data sheet. We have the output data on the screen which is in the pressure which is in kilopascal, uh, temperature and Fahrenheit in Celsius also. Uh, it's perfectly formatted according to the two values of floating point value. So this is how it's done. It's a code we need uh, for the working. So let's see how it works. Now, the interesting part of this particular video comes that's the practicality of this code. That's in common language working of this code. So go to the code, copy this entire code and open up the terminal for the Raspberry Pi. Here create a new file dot py extension as you can see on my screen and paste the entire code and just save it now this is a command to run the code and here we go and again there's a reading now when i apply some pressure over the sensor and run the command there's a change uh, in the pressure now again doing that there's again a change in pressure and temperature as well so one more so this is how a python code my apologies python code works uh, with this particular sensor uh, let's see uh, what are the features benefits of this particular sensor and what are the applications and the reason why we use this sensor the mpl 115a2 employs a mems pressure sensor with a conditioning ic to provide accurate pressure measurements from 50 to 115 kilopascal and integrated adc converts pressure and temperature sensor readings to a digitized outputs via an I2C port. Factory calibration data is stored internally in an onboard room. Now these features make it very useful for applications like barometry, altimeters, weather stations, industrial equipment, air control systems and health monitoring and a lot. Now you can purchase the sensor from the website as you can see on my screen and you can get the code from the resource tab and after that you can download it from there. Also, you can get the code from GitHub repository and that's control everything community. Well, you have seen the explanation, the working, the hardware connections part. So I would like to make it clear that in case if you have any kind of doubt regarding fully understanding of any part of this video till now, you can have your queries on the control everything.com and you can contact me there. Also, you can post your comments your issues on the community page of this website now for articles and blogs relevant to this video you can catch me up on instructables.com also for more video tutorials you can subscribe youtube channel just shown like here now i hope you enjoyed this video and have yourself a good one thanks for watching